For your resistant podcast. And Alan talking about movies. They may be best friends, but they always disagree. For your resistant podcast. And Alan, I seen that. Very good. Uh, we just watched The Predator, the 2018, 2018 Predator. Yes. And this is super confusing to me every time I talk about it because calling Predator 1 with Sylvester, or, uh, Arnold Schwarzenegger the Predator is perfectly reasonable way to talk about that movie. And so to change right. the title by just adding the, so do you call it the, the Predator? Is that how you differentiate? You have the Predator mm-hmm. and the, the Predator? I guess because what uh, the first movie was fast and furious and then like number 27 was like the fast and the furious it's the other way around but yeah oh okay the first one was the fast and the furious and then they went to just fast and furious Uh, but uh, well maybe that's what it is you call it the predator and the the predator (laughs) the yeah these are the naming i think i i appreciate fast and furious naming structure more because they're trying to have fun with it uh, right. And Aliens has a bit more consistency. You know, we go Alien, Aliens, Alien 3, like that. And then they put in the uh, the right. colon stuff. Predator is just trying to be confusing by going Predator, Predator 2, Predators, The Predator. Like, they're not trying to help you understand which movie you're watching at all. And I think they're trying to trick you into buying the new one, thinking it's the old one. Like, you look at the cover art, and it looks like yeah. the old school Predator uh stuff doesn't look like the new one uh basically the only thing i could think of is exactly what you just said or they realized that we're in the year of 20 or we aren't we're 2019 now when the movie came out it was 2018 so someone's gonna hop on google and and rent you know that one or they're gonna notice that the other one came out and was like 81 or something like that they'll be able to tell the difference between the two yeah, I think they're hoping for like people thinking, oh, this is clearly a republish or like a updated version, not uh you know, like a, a Blu-ray version of Predator. And so that's why right. they named it. But I uh now I know you hate this, right? You hated yes. the entire thing. I turned my 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 original <laughs> viewing of this movie had me turn it off about forty five minutes into it. Yeah. And so when you told me that and I went into watching this and I got to that scene, I kind of like that scene the most. I thought that was pretty funny. Really? Yeah. Oh, Cause so to, um, Hey, thanks for that host buddy to get yeah. into what that is. Cause I, I don't, we don't need to go in chronological order of this movie. It really, it really doesn't matter. No, uh, I, I, I hated this movie so much. <laughs> it was so forgettable that I wanted to make sure that I wrote down specific things. Yeah. So I wouldn't forget. So I wouldn't forget them. Did you like the? So I'm reading them. Did you write down? Get to I the chopper. That. I did. I wrote that down, and I also wrote instead of "You're one ugly," uh, you know, Olivia Munn saying "You're one beautiful." Oh. MF, you know. It's yeah. So stupid. Uh, speaking of that, so stupid. Everyone is using the f bomb in this, and it's so oh, yeah. unnecessary. It's like junior hires who just learned the word, just adding it in everywhere they could. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, so, you know, you, I don't, I don't, I don't want to pull us off on this tangent, but oh. that's exactly the way I felt about Logan. So, but I don't want to have that conversation. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But that's exactly the way I felt about Logan. To me, Logan they substituted. Yeah, go ahead. The word "the" for the F word. So it was a massive conjunction word for that movie. Yeah, for me, Logan works better because it's a lot more intense in the moments that they use it. You know, like he's yeah. he's always angry, but they're using it. <laughs> in as scientists yeah. doing science work in front of other science like it's not like a fear it's not like an anger based it's just uh, yeah using it, it just yeah it was, everyone yeah. uses this word it's, everyone knows you know when you're a scientist you always call something in uh the f-bomb like yeah. <laughs> and and when what, what was it and when olivia munn was like yeah and uh uh, we like this, or they like that. You like that name better, and like all the scientists were like, "F yeah!" And the main yeah. bad guy was like, "F yeah!" I was yeah. like, "Oh my gosh, it's so dumb." 
But uh, I know that's they should have called this Predator or the Dumb Predator. <laughs> it's such a terrible movie. <laughs> it should have been the effing Predator. That's what yeah. it, that that it's might true. be. That that probably exists somewhere, right? Like yeah. with all the yeah. <laughs> the the parody stuff. Uh, anyways, so getting away so from how do, we, how do we begin with this movie though? How do we begin with well, me so, hating it so much? <laughs> so what I wanted to talk about was the scene that made you quit the first time. So okay. Al- yes. Olivia Munn accidentally tranquilizes herself, and yes. I I hated her in this movie. I did not enjoy her She's, in any scene. Uh, before b- before we get into this, real quick, let me interrupt you if you don't mind. Yeah. Was did you like any character in this movie? I like Nebraska. I thought he was strong. Which one was that one? He was the like the best friend, the one who died at the end, who sacrificed himself by jumping okay, into the, okay. the jet stream. Because every to me, every single one of these characters, including the kid, were very unlikable characters. Yeah. You didn't want to cheer for any of them at all. So I didn't like no, uh, not even his best friend guy. Michael Keegan. I think that's his name, right? Is it uh Michael Is that the bad guy? No, Key so Key and Peel, right? So you got um Okay, okay, yeah. Uh I can't I can't remember his the name. Joke, the joker. The joker name guy. The joker. So yeah. I didn't like him separately. But I did enjoy him and Thomas Jane's relationship. Like I thought, every time they interacted together, I really enjoyed that. But mm. when it was just him kind of being over the top, I was like, it is a bit much. But okay. their their so relationship, yeah. And so Olivia Munn's been tranquilized by herself. She accidentally shoots herself okay. in the foot, which I don't mind. Like she's not trained in any form, so her shooting herself in the foot makes sense. Um. But everything else she does doesn't. <laughs> so she wakes up in right. in a bed in a hotel room, hiding from the CIA, the whoever's hunt the predator hunters. There's not. Right. I don't feel like it's ever really clarified who they are. There's some government agency that is hunting the predator when they show up and trying to keep right. it under wraps. And so those guys are trying to kill all the military guys and uh, Olivia Munn. She wakes up, grabs a shotgun because they're like standing there watching her and she puts it, pulls the shotgun on the main guy and he grabs it and he's like wrestling with her, wrestling with her. And then she pulls the trigger and the whole time the guys behind him are like cracking up, laughing, joking around about, oh, you owe me 20 bucks. I knew she would pick up the gun terrible, and then terrible you scene. owe me 20 bucks for because she pulled the trigger like and then the guy flicks her right in the nose because he try, she tried to kill him and stuff. To right. me, I didn't think, like, I could buy that. Like, for these guys who, want are crazy, right? Because they're all, I, they call them the loony squad, but they're, right. they had been decommissioned from combat because of their mental health issues. And, uh, well, it, it, wasn't, it wasn't that specific point that made me turn it off. It mm-hmm. was when she decided to walk out the door yeah. and Thomas Jane said, well, you know, I eat your whatever. Yeah. And then there was this whole conversation where they kept saying it over and over and over again. And again, um, profanity and that sort of stuff doesn't bother me. So yeah. the context of what they were talking about isn't offensive to me. Yeah. But it was just, I just thought the entire dialogue of that whole back and forth was just so stupid. I was yeah. like, off i'm done i know the way this movie's gonna go done i'm yeah. done <laughs> but i felt like it but, got better but tonight from there. i powered through it, i don't know no well like it got away from that that uh it, it didn't it didn't no you don't think so because it no they kept they kept making jokes in weird weird places where it wasn't funny yeah well that that was definitely going on especially with the um mike what is his name there's jordan peele and keegan michael key i think is his name uh, you need to call him Joker. <laughs> the Joker guy. He he yeah. was a bit like much. He was kind of grating. Um, and his death scene with Thomas Jane, I actually like the idea. I just wish they would have count down. Had they been like three, two, one, and then shot each other, I would have been right. They wouldn't have been more. able to hear each other though. Yeah, but at least because they they just intuit when to pull the trigger. You know what I'm saying? Like, there's no, if they would have just added them, like, doing a countdown to each other, even though if they couldn't hear each other realistically, it at least would have allowed you a chance to be like, oh, yeah, this makes sense, you know? But anyways, we we can get to that when we do. Um, Yeah, I I don't even know where to start. So, you, it's... So, I, I, 
Go ahead. I can tell you where we start. Where when Olivia Munn starts chasing the predator, and she's as fast as the predator. She's she. Not only is she as fast as a predator, but this whole entire military compound with soldiers everywhere being. If there's one scene before she picks up the tranquilizer gun, of all of these soldiers running up the stairs after the predator. But when she picks up that tranquilizer gun, there is no soldier None. to be seen after. And no one's smart enough to look on the ground at the glowing blood except for Olivia Munn. Yeah. Hey, Hipster. How's it going? What's up, Hipster? Um, yeah, no, she, like, to me, if you're going to run on camera, I feel like you got to know how to run. I don't know if you felt this way. <laughs> the predator does. <laughs> the, predator, the predator could run 20, 30 miles an hour. Yeah. And she was like lightly jogging and like it looked like her first time running when I was watching it. I was like, there's no way she would keep up with a predator. And but she was keeping pace. She had no problem and no fear. Because you got Gary Busey's son telling her, Don't let him escape. And then she's like, All right, and grabs a tranquilizer gun and chases after him. And it's like yeah. mm, you just watched him murder like forty guys right in front of you and now you're just gonna run after him like and that's that's one of the things about this movie i wasn't really sure how the ensemble cast was gonna because every other predator right you have a an ensemble and everyone dies except one person each time or one or two people and uh it was so convenient for the first half of the movie because the predator would get a hold of one of them and just throw them when every other time he was uh, you know, like without thinking, without considering, just straight up murdering everyone he saw. You know, just yes. he had no reason for it. Like, no, he wasn't like picking and choosing. But every time he showed up on a main character, he was like, oh, I should just throw you because you're important to the plot. And it's like, you can't. Correct. If, if, if he can't kill him, then they shouldn't meet. You know, there's you can't just write your way around this. This is this is infuriating. <laughs> So I think after we get done talking, you're going to hate this movie as much as I do. <laughs> well, so, okay. Yeah, I, the- to be fair, I like this movie the best out of the Predator movies. <laughs> okay. I right, don't right, like we'll- this movie. I think it's really bad. Okay. I, okay. Yeah, I think then, it's a okay, bad movie. May- but in comparison, because so I've, next- the- I've been watching the Predator series. I've been watching the Alien series. And before that, I was watching the X-Men series. And before that, I was watching the Fast and Furious series. So mm. All I've done for a long time is just kind of watch bad, mediocre movies with a couple highlights. And so getting right. to this, it's like, hey, at least this isn't completely terrible. There's moments it, it that is, I like. Though. It, it is. <laughs> so the, the next thing I wrote down, we're going to go each down each and every one of my lists because you right. made me watch this movie. <laughs> so the, the, the first thing I put on here, okay, the very first thing that we skipped over that we, we'll swing back around because he sure. becomes important to the end of the movie is the two bully uh, thing to the kid. Yeah. Now, is the kid a high-functioning autistic, or what is he? They never actually said what well, he was in the, the movie. The kids say he's got Asperger's. The two okay, movies. so he has Asperger's, right? Yeah. And it, in that scene where the kids you know, pull the, the fire... Um, the fire, the fire alarm, alarm reminded loads well, like literally the exact same scene if you think about it. And and again, it's not it's not like Aquaman or out there, you know, were original with it, but the same sequence happened in Aquaman when you know they're at the aquarium and yeah. the two just the two bullies yeah. go up there and push them and then whatever. But but no, then the next thing that I wanted to talk about was okay, they get Olivia Olivia Munn, shoots herself in the foot, right? She passes out. They save her, get to the chopper. They're talking about motorcycles. Huh, huh. Yeah. And then when, okay, how did they get money for the hotel room, the cigarettes, and the beer? Yeah, none of them would have money unless they stole it from Olivia Munn because they had her purse. But they never, uh, okay, so I guess we could say it from that perspective that maybe they stole it from her. Yeah. But like they had beer, they had cigarettes, they were chilling out at this hotel room. Like they had nothing to worry about at all. Well, they went to like a biker party first. And so there's like a biker party. Yeah. It was a hotel room. It was a hotel room with a party going on outside. I thought it was all bikers outside. Was, I, it I might have been all bikers. It could have, they, they may have just shown the clip of all their bikes 
you know, mm-hmm. and like the establishing clip, the establishing shot uh, may have just been yeah. their bikes, but I took it as here's a biker bar, here's a biker hangout, and they're just hanging out with them during this party. Mm-hmm. Is the impression I got? It doesn't. It, it doesn't change anything either way, but that's where right. I thought they were. Um, yeah, I just thought it was like they literally just got broke out of of whatever jail that they were going to. And then now they have all this money where they're drinking, well, smoking and eating for like the rest of the movie. And can we talk about Olivia Munn getting on that motorcycle? Cause that was the most intimate yeah. thing I've ever seen. I wouldn't even do that with my wife. Like she just straight up straddles him on the motorcycle it from the front. Not it's like, why not get on the back? You just, you don't know this guy. There's zero. Well, she just, she trickles. She was passing out. I guess so he could hold on to her. Yeah, that's yeah. that's what I took from it because when she when she got on the bike that way, I, I kind of had the same feeling. But then again, you know, she knew she was passing out. Yeah, and, I get. And, and yeah. she probably passed, and she passed. Out, I'm assuming on him yeah. as they were driving to the hotel room. Yeah, that makes sense. I guess it's just to me, it was like, well, <laughs> why is this your choice to jump on a motorcycle with a stranger? Just to, like bear hug and wrap your legs around him. I was like, man, that's that's intense for your first meeting. Oh, well, you know, Olivia that, Munn's that kind of girl. If you know her, <laughs> if you know her lifestyle. The um, I did like. I thought it was kind of a funny moment when she she's on top of the bus, like trying to get down, and the main guy, which I I can't remember his name at all, uh, is like, come on, come on, come on, and she's like, it's too high or whatever, and he's like, come on, I got you, and then. She jumps and he just walks away <laughs> and lets her fall on the <laughs> ground. I thought that was pretty funny. You can call him the new Arnold. So. The new Arnold, the mini so Arnold. The, 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 yeah, we can. So we have we have the mini Arnold. We have the Joker. We have the Tourette's guy. We've got uh, Which, Jesus, whatever that dude's name was. <laughs> I liked it. And uh, and then you have Theon Greyjoy, who literally did nothing in the entire film except for uh, eat. Oh, that's who that was. Okay, yeah, Pickle, yeah. Eat, pick, eat pickles and die. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> he, like his his whole purpose was eat pickles and die. Get his arm chopped off and be a sniper. Um, <laughs> and there's also Nebraska. I think he left him out, but the best friend. Oh yeah, 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 yeah. Best friend. I you remember his name. Uh, I like uh, him in there. Thomas Jane in this. He is the guy with Tourette's. I thought he did yeah. an okay job. I mean, it was like another moment of just throwing in curse words but at least with right. Tourette's it's kind of you know like at least it, it, there's some reason for it although I don't feel like they ever did anything to justify ha- him having Tourette's you know it was almost like a making fun of him for having Tourette's was kind of the only point of him having Tourette's yeah he would have never made it into the military with Tourette's yeah, yeah, probably not. I don't know the the standard on that, but I would imagine like I can't see that going well. Although if it if you do, if you can't make you it. Just, if you can't make it, into... I'm sorry. Good. I was just gonna say if you do have Tourette's and you can get in the military, you could just curse out your COs all the time and just blame it on the Tourette's. <laughs> it's a pretty good idea. Yeah. Um. But yeah, no. See, <laughs> there was one scene. So, uh. For so my daughter has Down syndrome. And we, we've talked about this before and stuff. And so every time, every time someone uses retarded, it always kind of rubs me the wrong way. You know, it's like right. It it's not offensive, and I, I I'm not like I never f- want to feel like I have to control someone's speech and say like, oh, you're not allowed to say that because it, you know, it to me it's always like, wow, you use that as an insult, and you know, I, I know it's connected to you know who my daughter is, and she's so you know, so good, so beautiful, so smart, so caring, so loving. Like it's such, it, it, it reduces her so much. Uh, but in this movie, it made me laugh so hard when they did it. Cause they, they said something about, Oh, this, this plan's retarded. And one of the guys walks by and he's like, Hey, don't say that his son's retarded. Like trying to like defend his buddy. But, yeah. uh, I, I, it made me crack up laughing. I was like, that's, because at first, when he first said it, I was like, oh, why would they put that in there? Like, it seems very tone deaf. And then to have the joke follow right up after it kind of made it better. It's still, you know, still pretty rough, but I thought it was funny. That is, that is a great segue into my next problem with the movie. 
is the subplot with the kid. Yeah. Okay. The subplot with the kid, um, you know, Jesse. being able to figure out is his name Jesse. Uh, it's uh, Tremblay. Um, Joseph. Is it Joseph? The, it's a kid from Room. I, I, I don't know. He's been in a few different things. Well, ultimately, he is able to outsmart the giant predator at some point with the, with their own technology without having any prior knowledge yeah. of the technology. And then, of course, later on, he does the same thing again. Uh, I just, the subplot of the movie, I mean, you know, when they open up with the movie with the bullies, I was like, okay, he's going to do something with the Predators. You know it, because yeah. why would they put an, uh, you know, an autistic slash Asperger's, whatever yeah. it is, uh, in the movie? Why why would you make that specific? Why would you show that off? Because it's going to come back later on, yeah. you know, in the film. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I, I did not like the subplot with this kid at all. Yeah. Yeah. When they established that in the beginning, my assumption was he's going to end up giving them away at some point that they're going to be hiding mm. and then a siren's going to go off and he's going to freak out and they're going to have to like, no, it's okay. It's okay. You know, try to calm them down, but make it risky for them. But no, you're right. They used, right. he was like, he, he figured out their language completely to the point where he could just read everything. <laughs> he figured out how right. to hack into everything. He was so smart. The government hires him at the end to work on the project <laughs> they give him his own desk he's he's what eight nine like because yeah, he's he's the next evolution man he's the next evolution he's the one true warrior of the group which <laughs> was a weird way to describe him like oh my gosh yeah when he i detect only one person within your group that's you know a true warrior uh, that's worthy a true warrior i was yeah. like oh my when they revealed it was him i was like what yeah this just movie just became that much worse <laughs> it became that much worse oh yeah well, what do you think about but, the jesus guy the know. jesus guy they didn't even develop him at all they yeah. didn't develop hardly anybody at all i mean again every single one of these characters from the predator all the way down to the little kid for me they didn't do a good job of making them likable at all yeah. so i didn't care if any of them survived you know yeah did you expect them to die or did you expect them to survive throughout uh because it was a predator movie i actually expected them to start dying off as soon as they left the hotel yeah and then once you kind of got how the the plot was going yeah you kind of knew that they were going to make it to a certain point and uh i really thought that all of them were going to make it out alive yeah until the predator turned turned on him and said hey i'm going to hunt all of you and then i was like okay now he starts picking them off one yeah. by one yeah it was like now the movie starts because up up until then they had like you know their god mode on they didn't have any there was no risk like you knew anytime they're in danger right. they're just going to get out like they 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 showed their cards way too early they should have the dog should have killed at least one person or at least hurt oh, one sorry, person the dog the dog, <laughs> the dog. so look look i don't know if you're going to be i don't know if you're going to be able to see this I right can't, yeah i don't know if you can read can you read it it's so small it says uh, it says could not wait for them to die <laughs> <laughs> because I could care less about every single one of those characters. They were all so unlikable. I could not wait for the movie to start killing them off. Well, do you want to talk about their death scenes when we get to that? Uh, yeah, yeah, we can definitely talk about those, but we just, we, you brought up another thing. Sure. So right underneath couldn't wait for all of them to die was left dog alive. Yeah, so that was that dumb. scene when when they fought when they fought all those or I guess there's only two dogs when they fought the two dogs right yeah and I, what did he I don't even know what he shot the dog in the head with he just did it so it. close that it was either I was a little confused by this either because he was so close the bullet penetrated his hard shell and like gave him brain damage or the impact was enough because it was so close to give him brain damage but. That is not really how bullets work. Like they, <laughs> they still build like the closer, like point blank, like touching the barrel is going to slow down and make it less effective overall. You need a little bit of room for the bullet to gain that velocity and the more velocity it has, the harder it hits. So for him to be so close and to shoot it right. point blank like that and for that to work doesn't make any sense. And also they were shooting it with rifles which again 
way more penetrating power, way more velocity, should be way more effective, but somehow right. he, he sneaks up on it and just shoots it in the back of the head and gives it brain damage. Well, he, he okay, so let's say it's brain damage. Yeah. So this highly evolved dog-looking creature, when you shoot it and give it brain damage, it acts exactly how a dog would act. Yeah. Fetch, you don't even have to teach it. You have to teach a dog yeah. how to play fetch. Yeah. It just doesn't do it by nature. Yeah. But this dog or this whatever predator dog starts playing fetch and acting like a dog immediately. But or I guess not immediately, but they kill one of them. And when they shoot the one in the back of the head, they they hop in the RV and take off with this dog walking in the middle of the street. Yeah. So in theory, they were going to let that dog go and potentially kill just a bunch everyone. of kids. <laughs> Well, no, because it was on, it was Halloween. So there's yeah. kids everywhere. Yeah, yeah. So they're like, yeah, go, go, go have some fun dog. Yeah. No, go have some fun. It's just like the end of Jurassic world too. Yeah. Oh, they're just like me. Click. <laughs> no, Dude, they're going to go kill a ton of people. <laughs> they're not just like you. Yeah. They should have killed that little clone is what they should have done. They're on her. Yeah. Yeah. That was, <laughs> that was the worst, but okay. So then the next huge issue that I had, mm. Okay, the next huge issue was literally they jump into they jump in the RV, yeah, and when somehow I forget what happens, or maybe they don't fully take off, but they they all exit the RV, yeah. Um, I forget why. Why do they exit the RV? But uh, the predator shows up, the one that they've been chasing, yeah, um, shows up, and they're all pointing <laughs> guns at the predator. The predator's like jesus out and then he tells them to put their guns down so the the reason why they get out of the rv is because a predator gets on top and pulls the driver out through the window i think he does that after if i remember i just watched the movie they got out of the the, the car for a reason i just don't remember what it was but he jesus was left in the rv by himself okay and then they, they were searching outside of the RV and then the predator jumps on the RV and rips them out. And then they all turn and they point their guns at them. Yeah. Is that, is that when they and, found, uh, uh J Oh, Jacob Tremblay, the, the kid is, did they find the kid and stop for him? Like no, they, they got him on the, they got him on the, the baseball field. Okay. Did they find the gauntlet then? I don't know. It doesn't matter. They stop for a reason. Yeah. Yeah. Stop for a reason. He pulls the, pulls Jesus out and he tells them to put down their weapons. Yeah. So instead of massacring everybody so the, and taking what he needs. The reason was he was trying to help the humans is what we find out at the end. He was coming to deliver the humans, the predator killer armor. And he's only been fighting in self-defense. All right. I'll take that logic and I'll, I'll write that off of my, because I hated the movie so much, I didn't even think about him defending humans. Yeah, because he because he could because he, he could have killed the the main character at least three times. Yeah. and didn't do it. Yeah, because the he fights in the scientist's office, but that's because they have him strapped down and they're you know they're attacking mm -hmm. him, you know, and so he's got to escape. And he fights the soldiers in the beginning, but I believe they open fire on him first. If yeah, I they're remember. all shooting at him, and so. I, as far as I remember, everything has been in self-defense or at least in a panic of trying right. to protect himself. And so that's why it doesn't make sense when you first watch it, but when you have the information about the predator killer armor at the end, it kind of adds up, sort of. It's it's dumb. But Yeah. Well, fine. I'll I'll take that off and I'll say <clears throat> because the predator is trying to save humanity for some reason. I don't know. Cause and, he's part uh, human. And I guess, but they also, th there was a lot of guessing going on. People were yeah. like, Oh, well he's here. He's running. He's a rogue. I can tell he's a rogue. Well, how can you tell he's a rogue? You don't never come across a predator <laughs> before. How was he a rogue? Yeah. And then, then like the next scene, he's like, Oh yeah, he's probably got a ship that was trying to give us something. How do you know that? Yeah. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> Oh my gosh. But mm. so the the small predator is practical. Mm -hmm. He's a that's a man in a suit. The big right. predator is all CGI and I thought that looked terrible. Yeah. He's it did. The lighting did not match the any of the scenes. He was like overly shadowed and was just like didn't fit, didn't feel like he actually existed and reminded me of Gordo from uh the Mortal Kombat. <laughs> 
like yeah coro <laughs> and it was just like what is going on here like this 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 should not look so bad especially because he's always in the darkness he right. should like that's why you know cgi is done at night so often because it's way easier to hide the uh that it's cgi the darker your your frame is the darker the scene is it's easier to implant in the shadows than it is in the light and yeah because when you look at when you look at predators or predators yeah uh, they had the smaller ones and they had the bigger ones and both people were in suits, suits. yeah yeah they're bigger both. humans to do it so it looked good yeah. okay this one they were like forget all that bull crap let's go all cgi yeah well because they wanted them to be 11 and, yeah. feet tall and that's <sighs> one of the things about it is that every Dumb. time they're like we have to go bigger than the last time that's what people want right we did extra predators last time let's go bigger let's make them twice as big there's no way they're gonna and it's like no use the same thing you've established use the same character but make your main characters make your main cast likable and make you you can make the audience care about them then your movie is going to succeed but they're like no let's right let's just make the predator 11 feet tall, <laughs> you know? And it's just like, it's not, this doesn't, you can't sacrifice plot. You can't sacrifice character. You can't fa sacrifice story for a big monster because we know he's going to okay. lose. So, so since you understand this movie a lot better than I did, <laughs> the scene at the barn where yes. the, where Arnold jr. Yeah. To the bad guy and just gives up everything like he's like hey i have a plan and the plan was to just give up yeah i didn't i didn't understand how like i didn't understand his plan he sent theon Greyjoy and i think jesus yeah. to go fire up something which ultimately helicopter. became st stupid helicopter <laughs> but um but while theon Greyjoy and jesus ran off to the left he's like all right i have a plan and then they just give themselves up yeah. So his best friend gets beat up. Yeah. He gets beat up. Yeah. Potentially Olivia Munn was going to get beat up. Yeah. She was, was just like, shot I didn't in the head. Understand. Well, he, uh, yeah, that was that was a little bit later on. But what I'm saying is, like during when all that was going on, everybody was getting beat up for what? Like, what was his what was his plan? To get beat up and then sneak attack him, I guess. I I don't <laughs> know if his plan succeeded. That was the confusing part, right? Like it was like was this was your intention the whole time? Like why not just attack him? You know, like why, why let them beat you up for so long? Cause it, he like, yeah. at one point he's like, you guys must not have read my file. Cause you're talking yeah. about tomorrow. And then he like, while, hand <laughs> yeah. while handcuffed, he takes out two guys. And th this happens a few times. This happened on the bus where the driver yeah. sat there for like a minute, just looking behind his shoulder. Like, Oh no, what do I do? Even though I have a shotgun with me and I can stop this right away. He's just like, I guess I'll wait until you get the drop on me, you know? And the same thing happened with the second guy. The second guy was like, Oh no, my buddy just got t tackled. Now he pulled a gun and shot him in the shoulder. I don't know what I should be doing right now and waited until he got shot. Like it was just so, yeah. it was dumb. Yeah. It didn't, it didn't add up. It didn't really, it was the just whole, the, the whole the whole scene for me was 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 very I like I didn't understand the whole point of it other than just to get the kid that's into all the was. bad guy's hands yeah. and because it just didn't make sense because the fact that it's like okay somehow they figured out you know through a quick drawing that the kid did that, oh he knows where the he the uh, spaceship is and it just so happens that it's right down the road from us because it's a helicopter drive away even yeah. though the machine or that they said that the that the alien spacecraft crashed in mexico didn't it the first one i don't I know where the they, second one did because they they're the second one came at um right oh well no the first one crashed in mexico right but that was an escape pod remember his in the beginning the predator's ship got You're blown right. up and he did You're an right. escape pod out the opposite way so right. potentially that could have like landed in LA so, when his right. escape yeah, pod. So that one, yeah. So that one actually conveniently crashed within a helicopter's right away. Yeah. 
But, and uh, then Theon, <laughs> Theon Greyjoy and Jesus show up with a helicopter. Yeah, what was on the side of that? that I, I was trying to read it, and I like my brain can compute. It was, it was like a news channel for probably. It was either a real news channel, just like a throw for the people that yeah. let them borrow the helicopter, or it was a fake one just for the movie. Yeah. But it was a news helicopter that they stole. Gotcha. Because I thought, I thought Which, it was. I honestly thought it was a mistake at first. The because uh, the other guys had a similar blue helicopter that they kept using, and so yeah. I think I mean that was kind of the point, right? You're supposed to see the helicopter land and be like, "Oh no, the bad guys are back." But then there's like a weird painting on the side, and I was like, "What? Oh, what? Who? Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean?" And then they came out, and it's like, "Oh, okay, I'm just." And dumb. then they but, use the dog to yeah. track the he- other helicopter. <laughs> Yeah, not a lot about this movie makes sense. Right. They used the dog to track the other helicopter, which got like a five to 10, maybe 20 minute head start yeah. on them because they were able to land, put fence around, electrify the fence, you know, get computers up. Well, that was the other, <sighs> that was weird too, right? Because the, the bad guy, when he lands with uh, Jacob Tremblay, the kid, they are already established and set up there. Right. Like, it didn't look like he led them to a new place. It looked like he led them to something they had found months or, you know, hours ago, hours previous. And it was like, what, when did you guys find this? Cause I thought you needed him to right. guide you here. Not, you know, Oh, before, before we 100% leave the bar, uh, barn scene, yeah. I, I would like to throw this out here. What was your thoughts on the fact that the reason why the predators were coming here was because of climate change? And I, it was going to make our earth so warm that the predators could live here. I apparently do not remember that at all. I, I missed that don't? somehow. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He, uh, the scene where the main uh, bad guy was talking to Olivia Munn, yeah, and she's like, "Well, what are they doing here?" He's like, "Oh, you don't know? Climate change is making our world so much hotter, and they thrive on hotter planets, so they're just here waiting for us to die, and then they'll come over here and take over our planet, and they're I, just taking our <laughs> DNA to make themselves better." Gotcha. No, I, I missed like, that what? completely. I don't know how I missed that. Oh my god! I must have. It just must have. It was so terrible. It must have been so stupid that it was just white noise. My brain just was like, "Nope, sorry." Or or you, or you were in such a green. You're like, "Oh yeah, well, humanity's <laughs> destroying this earth." Oh, everyone go vegan. It's so cold everywhere. That's my message. <laughs> All right, so 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 back to the crash scene. They already have everything set up. And then, the, and then they have for me. They have one of the most uncomfortable uh, scenes in 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 the movie because yeah. you know I don't like I don't like when kids use profanity and especially when they have the kid drop the f bomb. Yeah. You know, I, I I don't like it. I never will like it. And it was just I ugh. mean that that would be a weird thing to like, right? You'd be like, oh man, it's my favorite. I love when kids use Some the F bomb. I guess. Like, yeah. You, you got to think in a, in a deprived world that has no idea what morality is when they see a, a kid using the F bomb, like, oh, that's just whatever. Well, I think most of the time it's just giggles, like, oh, I can't believe, like, this is naughty type of a thing, you know? But uh, yeah. to me, it, it doesn't it doesn't bother me in the way that, like, makes me upset. I'm always just like, I'm kind of surprised your parents are cool with this. But that's, but that's ultimately what I'm talking about. Yeah. That's generally the as far as I get to it. Whenever that happens, I'm just like, well, it seems like your parents right. maybe should have said like, nah, let's not do that. But because it didn't really <laughs> service the plot at all. No, it was just for a cheap laugh. Yeah, it's for a cheap laugh. But uh, let's see, they get there, and then about what, like thirty seconds later, the, our heroes show up. Yeah, no scratches, no nothing, ready to fight with yeah. guns. That uh, I'm not sure how they got. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no. They all had sniper weapons and stuff. And they all get set up on top of like with um, to ambush the other guys. And he right. goes, he goes and gets his son, and he gets the the black guy from, um, this is us. I don't know. I can't mm-hmm. remember his name. And they're like in a standoff, okay. and uh, he's like. You need to tell them to put their guns down. And he goes, all right, in 10 seconds, shoot the kid's kneecaps out if he doesn't let me go. And I thought that was such a, a power move. 
Like I actually liked it was. that line. Like it's like, oh yeah, that's that's pretty smart. I hated his character every other scene, but that was like the first time where I actually felt like, yeah. oh, he's like he's a legit threat based on this one moment. You know, and everything else was like, no, he's he's an idiot. Like he just thinks he has power. And then his his willingness to have the kid's niece shot out was like, oh, okay, that's actually pretty effective use of this moment here instead of just it being exactly the same as every other movie you know what i mean like great no i thought it was pretty cool a pretty a pretty strong moment so then the big predator shows up and ruins everybody's day yeah uh kills a whole bunch of star trek red shirt guys yeah and <laughs> yeah then starts talking english to our guys through their translator system yeah. that happens to know how to translate their talk. Yeah. Yeah. He tells them that he, he's here. His, his prize is McKinnon, which is the main guy's last name. And he says, there's only one true right. warrior here and it's McKinnon and I will take him as my prize type of thing. And everyone's like, all right, just like, let's let him take him then. The, the bad guys, all the guys are like, he only wants him. So let's spread out in 12 directions. It will be good. <laughs> And the guy's like, no, we need to stick together. Otherwise, he's going to pick us off one by one, which that's really smart, except their plan during the whole thing after they go together is, hey, let's just have these people split up real quick and make a diversion. Or let's have these people go over here. Right. It's like, what happened to sticking together? Like, wasn't that the whole plan? But uh, yeah, so they, the predator says, you have seven and a half minutes and I'm going to hunt you down. He blows the ship up and uh, starts following him through the jungle. And before this, the first main cast member dies, which is the guy from Game of Thrones, who's got a sniper. Yeah. Predator shows up, rips yeah, his arm Rachel. off, and uh, just like Star Wars, rips his arm off, and uh, um, then apparently kills him. And you don't see it; you just see his arm get ripped off. I expected him to come back, uh, because. Oh, did you really? Yeah, because they didn't show him die. And generally when you you don't show yeah. someone dead, there's there's all they always come back. You know what I mean? Like for the most right. part. And it's like right. there's generally because everything up until that point had them all surviving, you know, every encounter. So it's like, oh, he's gonna come back like Gary Busey in number two. You know, it was right. like you sh they see Move over, son. Yeah. <laughs> I expected him to be like to show up with, you know, his arm dripping blood and right. you know, almost dead and help out the main guy at the last second to give him a sniper rifle so he can shoot the predator, you know, whatever it would be, you know, but no, he's right. dead. And then, and then as they're running the funniest joke that they wrote for that movie takes place when, uh, when that red shirt, star Trek style guy takes the predator weapon and yeah. throws it. And our, and our dude from This Is Us is like, bro, it's going to come back. It's a predator weapon. <laughs> and he's like, you have to put your arm up like this and catch it. Yeah. And it comes back and he goes to crab it and just cuts his arm Slice off. Slices his arm off. I was a little confused yeah. by that. Was that just to sacrifice that guy so the blade would stop? Well, no, like it's like a boomerang. So yeah, it, yeah. whoever would have thrown it would have come back to him. But like as far as plot wise, as far as script wise, it was just a way to get rid of uh, a red shirt. But I'm saying and the, I, the motivation of the black guy, the, the bad guy, when he said, put your, you got to put your arm up like this and catch it with your wrist. He had no receiver on his wrist. He had no, like, you know, no gauntlet to catch it. And so it was just I, flesh. So I wasn't sure if he was like, if you don't, if this doesn't hit someone, it's going to keep going. So he was like, you threw it put your arm up like this and you'll catch it. And then it slices his arm off. Or if he was like, no, there's a way, there's a technique. If you put your arm up, you'll actually be able to catch it. And that was what I was confused by what his motivation was like. Was he just trying to stop the thing or was he really trying to help the guy out? Well, it could have been both. Yeah. <laughs> it could have been both because it, it hit it. It hit in the tree behind them. So whether he would have, slice his arm off or just moved out of the way it would have hit the tree behind him and stuck there yeah unless so once I, it I hits hits meat it changes like because it it went around trees and came back so i i would have thought right. it would have just continued going around trees but since it chopped his arm it's just like all right now we're just gonna go straight 
but it, like the technology doesn't make <laughs> yeah. any sense you know like it's a very well, weird. Well, there's that, and how, and and how did the bad guy know that it would it would do that? Yeah. Well, I That's mean, they the did all thing. the testing in the lab and stuff, but still, it's. I don't know. I don't know how many people they had to sacrifice before you realized you could catch it with your <laughs> wrist. Um, well, that guy gets his arm chopped off, and then bad guy shoots him in the face because it, we need quiet. Yeah, and that like and, to me that truth. wasn't like I get the 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 reasoning for that but it did not feel authentic. It didn't feel like an actual, like he didn't seem like a cold blooded killer in that moment. He seemed like he was trying to portray that he was that, but it was not believable to me. Mercy kill. Yeah. He was just like, we got to be quiet. And it was just like, ah, your, your character, you're, you're not the right type for this, for this guy. You know what I mean? Like you can't, you're not pulling it off. Let's talk about the the bad guy's death scene. Yeah, that was pretty funny. Uh, the, that out of, out of you thought it was funny, yeah. and it could have been funny if it would have been somebody else. Hmm. I felt when it, when it comes to a predator movie, yeah, you want the bad guy to kind of get it because you know Topher Grace, he got it pretty good. Yeah. you know, mm-hmm. um, Adrian Brody stabbed him up through the was it the the chin up into his face. Yeah. And then yeah, blew him up with grenades. Yeah, um, this guy, he, yeah, he looked he looked the other way and shot himself in the head. Yeah, which was like it was for a cheap joke, but yeah. like, you know, whenever I was watching the movie, you know, I didn't care if any of the main characters died, but like when you watch a movie, you're rooting for the villain to get his own. Yeah, and I felt well, like it was. Well, they even said that it just didn't work. Minnie Arnold's like, when this is over, we're gonna dance, and the guy's like, I already got my shoes on. So right. you're like expecting them to have this big big moment you know where they come at each other and the the mini arnold kills him for you know risking his son's life and kidnapping him and all that right and it just it's so anticlimactic like the the joke is funny the that he screwed up the predator gun blew his own head off but the the culmination of him being the protagonist was kind of weak right and then uh what that's when you got your was it your favorite scene with uh interrets guy yeah so they they stay behind to distract him which is again it was like why Mm -hmm. like you just just two seconds ago you guys established we have to stick together or we're gonna get picked off one by one so why let someone stay back to distract them like it just didn't didn't add up at all um, but they stay back and Thomas Jane gets thrown up into a tree and gets impaled in the chest. And then uh, Keegan-Michael Key gets blown, uh, gets shot through the stomach and all his guts are hanging out. And they're both sitting there and they look at each other. They make eye contact and they're like, all right, yeah, and they nod. And they pull their guns out and they aim at each other. And then, like I said, with no countdown or anything, they just shoot at the exact same time and kill each other, which... I thought again was a pretty like strong, you know, moment for these characters who Keegan Michael Key almost killed Thomas Jane in the beginning, or not in the beginning, but in their backstory. And they became friends over time, going through court and doing all this stuff together. And like they built this really strong relationship where they actually truly care about each other and were willing to kill each other to, you know, mercy kill each other. And uh it was so ruined to me that they didn't count or didn't give a, you know, like any type of how they timed that. Cause they just aim at each other and both pull the trigger at the exact same moment. And I was like, well, that could have been way more effective in my opinion, but it, it kind of got lost by not making any sense. Well, well, you know, how much of this movie actually really, it truly made sense. None, but like just to have something, something, <laughs> So, to have a solution so simple of just having the character say one, two, three together and then pull the trigger is like, it's frustrating where it's like, you guys, you, you could have, you could have removed that, that moment of like, oh, this that doesn't make sense. How did that work? <clears throat> Those two guys die. So we've lost Theon Greyjoy. We've lost Joker and we've oh, lost to Red Sky. Uh, before that, um, Thomas Jane, the Tourette's guy, jumps onto the predator who is burning on fire, setting himself yeah. on fire, and just stabbing him in the neck like uh, 
uh, Walton Goggins from Predators. Yeah, that, was, that was a legit move. Yeah. That was a legit move. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so th- they're all dead now. So we have uh, Minnie Arnold, Nebraska, uh, Olivia Munn, the Jesus guy. And I think that's it, right? And may I think one red shirt guy. Yeah. Because I want to say the the big tall guy destroyed just massively destroys one guy just to just just destroy him yeah. i think uh, but either way the out of the characters that we're supposed to care about you are correct yeah. i got olivia munn mini arnold's nebraska and the kid the kid's still there too yeah and the the mexican just jesus guy the kid and, but, the, and the jesus guy and so he tells olivia munn to take the kid and hide and they i don't know the he gets a hold of the kid because he he goes up to him, and again, Minnie Arnold's like, here, here I am, take me, type of thing. And instead of killing right. him, because every other time he had a moment, <laughs> instead of killing him, he throws him over. And Olivia Munn jumps from the the top and onto his back, and he throws him or her. And it's like, what? why are you not murdering them? If you touch anyone else, you just rip their faces off. And yet, because they're main characters, they're protected. And it's very clear what's going on here. And so he grabs Jacob, right. takes him into the spaceship, and they all run after the spaceship and jump onto the top. Um, Olivia Munn is missing at this point. I don't remember where, where she was. Uh, so so basically the ships are taken off. The three guys jump on. Yeah. And everybody's shooting the, uh, the spaceship, trying to get it down. And for some reason, Olivia Munn ha- happens to have a machine gun that has never been really shown before. Yeah. That's got the grenade launcher at the bottom of it. So she shoots one of the engines. Oh, that's right. Um, but I honestly but, expected her to shoot the Mexican guy. I thought, <laughs> she, I thought See, now that would have been funny. I thought she was going to like, beca- I mean, again, she's a, just a scientist and she's with soldiers. So the soldiers even being crazy, it's like, all right, well, at least they had training. So I get right. why they can, you know, fight at least, you know, why they have skills and tactics and can do this stuff. It's like, okay, that all adds up. But Olivia Munn is on par with them for right. no reason. There's nothing. For plot to, purposes, yeah. Yeah, just for plot. But that's, how terrible is that, you know? But yeah, so I was hoping that she would shoot the Mexican guy right in the head. I thought that would have been so funny. Well, well, she, well, the thing about it, though, it's important to point out that that the ship still flies for a really long time away yeah. from her on that ledge for the <laughs> ending of the movie to take place. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So it's flying yeah. and you have, you have like this fast and the furious, I think it was what seven with the longest, um, yeah. Jetway ever. Yeah. I think so it was have, six, have, but doesn't matter. Well, you have this thing going on where it's kind of flying, but it's not going up into space for some reason. Yeah. Kind of chilling before because he, he could still go up there's no reason to stop him from from going up into space because he was still flying and then the shield comes up okay and then here's another problem that we have with the movie right well the, the shield is a, a tool to kill someone i don't know if you want to talk right, about that but, first but but this no no but the shield right the mm-hmm. shield is 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 coming up from the bottom okay yeah how in the world does his son know that one that they're on top of the ship and two how did he get the the communicator yeah. to tell his dad that the shield was coming up well so he has a walkie talkie yeah that i think it was given to and the him predator didn't predator didn't, didn't take that away from yeah, him. yeah i guess not he probably wasn't worried slinging about him it. around and didn't fall down yeah. <laughs> but but how did he know that his dad was up on top of the ship dad yeah yeah no i don't know how did he... they, they definitely don't establish it you could make a reach and say that he the dad was like hey we're here on top but that's about it you know what i mean like for also because the kids saw the predator hit the buttons and he's like he's putting up a shield so he could have been just telling his dad hey there's a shield going up just so you guys know not expecting him to be on the roof but it's very clear that the son was warning them like hey the shield is about to come and chop you in half so you should be ready and uh I thought the the shield stuff was I didn't I thought the Mexican guy getting chopped in half I thought that was dumb, um, but Sorry, I man. I liked it the just, it just went down bad yeah yeah I did like the use of it separating him in Nebraska 
and then Nebraska, right. you know, there was I, at that point because it was smooth, right? So there wasn't even anything for him to hold on to, and he it should have been sliding. Was that? He should have been sliding from the very beginning. Yeah, but for him, you know, they're like pounding, like trying to get to each other, and Nebraska flips him off, and then runs and jumps into the the jet or the um, the engine. Yeah. The engine, yeah. I thought that was that should have been the only force field death. You know, like the the Mexican guy should have had a better a better death. Like right. he deserved better than just that that was a red shirt death, is what that was. Yeah. You know what was, I mean? It was. Um, and so was Theon Greyjoy's. Yeah, no, I agree with that. His was a little bit better because it changed the tone. You know, it changed the like completely changed the tone of okay, well now they're at risk type of thing. Right. So even though it was kind of unceremonious, unceremonious, it was still, oh, now we're in a new part. We're in a new phase of this movie because these guys are at risk now. But for the Mexican guy, it was just like, here's another cheap laugh or not cheap laugh, but like, here's a little creative thing. We're just going to sacrifice this character. Um, Bye, Jesus. (laughs) But no, I liked, I liked Nebraska's death and I liked Minnie Arnold's use of the force field to slide down to get underneath. I thought that was pretty right. cool. Like that was a good idea. Um, but yeah, no, he gets in and Nebraska destroys the ship and it crashes. And now they're fighting and, uh, Oh, this is when no, this is when Olivia Munn shows up. Cause she's now found a marble in the jungle. She found the marble that dude dropped. Yeah. He, she, she found the marble that, the kid dropped by accident when the predator picked him up. Yeah. But how, how does she ever find that? What do you mean? Uh, I don't know. Like, it's just crazy. Like how could she ever find that? Oh, sorry. Uh, Kaleida, uh, no links. If, uh, there's something you want, if you want to tell me what that link was, we can talk about it, but, um, but it's just like, yeah. So, but, but the point is, is, is they were in the air flying for a really long time. So there's no way as fast as Olivia Munn was earlier in the movie, yeah. keeping up with the predator. There is no way she would have been able to make it from that ledge to that moment to, yeah. to save him. Yeah. Also way too confident for her to just jump on the back of the predator like that. Like no fear right. again, you know, like, I don't know. It, it, she's not really a Mary Sue, yeah. but she's as close as you can get without going full bore Mary Sue. You know, like she had some then, justifications for some of her actions, but all the action, like the actual fighting stuff, made zero sense. Right. And then what? Instead of killing her, he throws her. Yeah. Yeah. He just tosses her. <laughs> he- he throws her and then I think he grabs Minnie Arnold and throws him again instead of actually killing him. Yeah. And it doesn't make sense because he could just slice him straight up. Yeah. But yeah. And I'm trying to think your what favorite, else? your favorite dog comes back. The dog comes back to save the day. Yeah. And cause earlier they show they're playing fetch with the dog. The dog eats a very valuable piece of equipment. According to the bad guy comes up and throws it up right in front of Olivia Munn, who tosses it to Minnie Arnold, who puts it on a spear and throws it and it stabs the predator through the chest and blows him up. And his arms, well, what, his legs. It wasn't a spear. It wasn't a spear, like right before, and that was another thing, okay, when, they were, when, when Minnie Arnold slid mm-hmm. down, he actually used the predator's technology to open up the the spaceship. Yeah. How did he know how to do that? So right. fast forward to this, fast forward to this scene. Okay. His son turns on the force field and cuts off the predator's arm. arm. Yeah. So he fastens the bomb to the blade that they shoot out of their hand. Yeah. And he shoots that the blade into the predator's chest and blows off the rest of the arms and legs of yeah. that. Which. It was so stupid. <laughs> like yeah. what, it, if it's powerful enough to take off his arms and legs, shouldn't it be powerful enough to take off his face or destroy his chest right. or do any damage to well, anywhere he, else? He, he, they had to get that last line in there. Would you say? Shut up. Yeah. You know, oh, that's so dumb. Yeah. 
And uh, that's it. They uh, they go to the science the science building, and Jacob Tremblay is the smartest person in the whole world. And then they find the Predator Killer armor, which shoots out and gets on a scientist, and he thinks he's about to die. I thought he was the best actor in the whole thing because he was the only one I believed. He was like, <laughs> he was like, I'm dying. This is going to kill me. But uh, that armor looked dumb, and it had way too many weapons, and it was just like... And then the whole, yeah. the last, Poor CGI. the final line of the movie, one guy goes, what is that? And the mini Arnold goes, that's my new armor. I hope it comes in yeah. a 42 long and then cut to black directed by Shane right. Black. Yeah. And it's just like, Ooh. Shane Black. Was, I don't like Shane Black. Iron Man three. And you don't, you don't like kiss, kiss, bang, bang. I don't. I, we, we did that one right before we did Iron Man mm. three. And, uh, the problem is. This, so this wasn't as bad as that, but the problem with Kiss Kiss Bang Bang is everyone has the same voice. None of the characters are different in any way. They're all quippy. They're all sarcastic, identically. And you just you don't you don't believe that it's multiple people. You think it's you you see Shane think Black, Shane Black yeah. speaking the whole time. That was my ah. issue with that movie. But. Like I thought the jokes well, were funny um, and I thought it had some good moments, but for the most part it was like too much. But yeah, Predators, the Predator, not not great, but still I give I think, it a negative was a negative two. I think I give it a zero. It's down there with I mm. think it's like right on it's just like an average, like I thought it shot well, I thought it had some strong moments, I thought it had some weak moments. It wasn't I didn't regret watching it. I didn't enjoy watching it. So I'm just like, this is just kind of a zero type thing. Like it wasn't painful. It wasn't hard to get through where I'm like checking the time every five seconds or anything like that. It's just like, okay. Yeah, I was. <laughs> but you also I was watched. checking the timers. You watched the first half twice, which makes it even harder. Yeah. Like had you finished it the first time, it may not have been as bad. But why don't you tell people where they can find you, find your podcast, and uh, we'll wrap this thing up fire resistant podcasts on twitch and uh, that's where you can find us yeah and then we will be back next week if you're watching us on twitch we'll be back next week to do alien versus predator one and two with me aaron and taylor to culminate all this these last 10 movies 